Hello YouTube and welcome to another video from Strong Carolina. I'm your host, Coach King, and today we're going to be talking endurance. Now, typically keto and athletic performance greatness isn't really heard in the same sentence, or even in the same room. So, is the thinking that a ketogenic diet sucks for athletic performance based in reality or in reckless fear-mongering? Which, incidentally, is my absolute favorite form of fear-mongering. But there's a time and a place for that. It's called mainstream media. Regardless, let's talk endurance. Is a ketogenic approach to nutrition an ideal accompaniment to athletic endurance? Studies have been done on this subject before. And a lot of the results left something to be desired, leading many to write the case off as closed. But that may have been a bit too hasty, due to the fact that there's an inherent issue with these studies. That issue being, they're generally short nature. The metabolic changes that occur to optimize performance on a fat-based diet take time. This is commonly referred to as fat adaption or keto adaption. If adequate time is not given for full fat adaption to occur, it's unsurprisingly inevitable that performance will inherently suffer. The fact of the matter is, is that well done research on trained fat adapted athletes is almost non-existent. However, we can look at the physical and metabolic changes that take place that may make this a viable if not ideal nutritional strategy going forward. With that in mind, we'll take a look at a study that's due to be published later this year. We know a good bit about the study because Dr. Jeff Volick has given presentations on their findings. But first, let's discuss the physiological concepts we will be sussing out. That is, if an athlete is properly fat adapted, then they will have much higher access to their fat stores and thus much more potential fuel that can be utilized efficiently. So, what do we mean by fat adapted? Simply put, fat adaption means that genes associated with fat metabolism have been upregulated in skeletal muscle and throughout the body, thus allowing much greater and more efficient utilization of fat for energy. Now bonking, or hitting the wall, is a very real issue when it comes to ultra-endurance sports. With much greater fat utilization, thus saving muscle glycogen for when it's absolutely needed, it stands to reason that the issue of bonking during a marathon could be largely mitigated. So, with all that in mind, let's take a look at the study. Dr. Jeff Volick, one of the leading researchers in the field of ketogenic athletic performance, has collected data for the FASTER study. FASTER standing for fat adapted substrate oxidation in trained elite runners. I think there's an O missing in there. In order to study the physiological differences between male elite ultramarathon runners following either a high carbohydrate diet or a low carbohydrate fat adapted diet. Although, as stated previously, this study will not be published till later this year. However, Dr. Jeff Volick has given a number of presentations on the findings. The results were interesting to say the least. The average fatty acid oxidation rate for the fat adapted group was over twice that of the high carbohydrate group. That to me is somewhat unsurprising. What was surprising was the fact that the fat adapted group was oxidating fat at a rate that the current scientific literature states is the absolute maximum amount of fat an athlete can burn. Or more simply put, they were burning fat at a rate that was previously thought to be impossible. Case in point, in a 2005 study, it was determined that the absolute maximum amount of fat an athlete can burn was upwards of one gram per minute. With most highly trained athletes falling between 0.45 to 0.75 grams per minute range. However, in the FASTER study, the lowest rate of fat oxidation from the fat adapted group was 1.1 grams per minute, which is already over what was previously thought possible, with one subject actually showing a rate of 1.8 grams fat oxidation per minute. It has also been traditionally held that somewhere between 35% to 65% 
of your maximum heart rate, the body switches from using fat to burning glucose for energy. However, in the FASTER study, it was shown that the fat-adapted group, after three hours at 65% of their VO2 max, was burning 30% more fat than the high-carbohydrate group. So essentially, they were running off of more fat for longer. So again, if your body's more readily using fat for fuel, then potentially you have much greater fuel stores to be used efficiently at hand, or at love handles, whichever. On top of the greater ability to utilize fat and preserve muscle glycogen, other studies have shown that training in a carb-depleted state increases mitochondrial biogenesis. Or more simply, it increases your mitochondria count in muscle cells. Mitochondria are essentially the engines of the cell. Having more mitochondria in the cell is essentially akin to upping the horsepower. So, more mitochondria essentially means that the muscle cell has a greater ability to produce energy. Having more mitochondria present in the muscle cell is nothing but advantageous when it comes to athletic performance. In addition, other studies have shown that both pre- and post-exercise levels of adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisol were enhanced, while plasma insulin levels were decreased following a ketogenic diet as compared to a high-carbohydrate diet. So, what does all this mean? Worst case scenario, you shouldn't notice a decrease in athletic endurance following keto, assuming you've taken the time to become properly fat adapted, thus making your body more flexible in its ease of energy usage. Best case scenario, time to exhaustion while following a ketogenic diet may be enhanced, seeing as how that pesky wall will no longer be in your way. Is the ketogenic approach right for you? Honestly, you won't know till you try. But you shouldn't write it off, as it may hold the key to giving you that extra edge in powering through your next marathon. And that's pretty much it for this one. If you found this helpful or informative, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, check us out on Facebook, and we'll see you next time.